Hi everyone, it's JJ here and welcome to Be Colorful! In front of me I have the Tonic Craft Kit number 34. These are monthly kits from Tonic Studios and inside they contain a set of dice and stamps, a set of different types of card stock, some nouveau product and sometimes tools for crafting. All carefully selected to match the theme chosen by the designers. If you are interested in this kit, you will find all the information on the Tonic Studios website. I leave you the link down below in the description box. Now let's take a quick look at what we find inside the kit number 34. As for the paper, we have, as always, a selection of various types of Craft Perfect brand paper. This month, the color palette chosen for the kit is blue and copper. As for the nouveau product, we find a grey blue ink pad. A imperial blue glitter marker, a full bottle of copper penny crystal drop, one of glitter accent always copper colored. The difference between a glitter drop and a glitter accent, as you can see, is first of all the density of the glitter. In fact, the glitter accent has a higher concentration of glitter and the glitters are slightly larger. Finally, for all lovers of tiny diabolical sparkling dust, in the kit we find a whole bottle of glitter in this beautiful dark chocolate color. And these were the nouveau products included in the kit. Let's move on to the exclusive dice and stamps. This month the theme is Art Deco Frames. In fact, we have a set of dice that allows us to create frames in the Art Deco style. In the collection of cards that I will propose to you in these videos, Many will have the characteristics of Art Deco, symmetrical figure, geometric shapes, essential and elegant. Back to the dice, you have seen that there are those that carve very intricate frames, other coordinates that cut out the edges or the whole figure. We also have three sentiments, always with coordinated dice. As for the set of stamps, we find two sentiment, two decorative corners and a small decoration, all in the Art Deco style. Well, now that we have seen what the kit offers us, we can start creating our cards. Let's get off to a great start! In this card I'm going to use glitter. In these videos I will show you three ways to use glitter on your card. To use the glitter I have equipped myself with some allies to limit the damage. So for the glitter wall we need anti-static dust cloth like a Swiffer. Possibly a vacuum cleaner, always at hand. A brush, if you have a blending brush with harder bristles, would be better. A paper folder and a box with a sheet inside. Although they are annoying for many people, including myself, with glitter you get a really beautiful effect. The technique to apply glitter that I'll show you in this card 
involves to use uh, of a double sided tape with a very strong adhesive. I bought this set of three tapes on Amazon. I leave you the link below in the info box where you will find, as always, the list of supplies that I will use in the video, as well as the link to my blog where the list of products is uh, associated with the images for a better consultation. Okay, let's move on to the card. From uh, this uh, satin copper mirror card, I'm gonna make uh, the main panel. Forgive me, but the camera's uh, memory card went crazy and uh, didn't record uh, part of the process. So, as you can see, I started applying double-sided tape adhesive to create a geometric pattern typical of the Art Deco style. I'm alternating the thin uh, tape and the medium tape. To create your own pattern, you can take inspiration from the myriad of deco art images on the internet. In my case, I'm proceeding randomly, but trying to create a symmetrical design. Once I finished uh, to create uh, the pattern, it's time to apply the glitter. Strictly inside the box, I sprinkle the entire surface of the panel and with the paper folder, I'm going to press the glitter well so that uh, they adhere as much as possible to the tape adhesive. Look at that! What a fantastic effect! I clean up uh, with a brush, trying to remove all the excess glitter, or at least most. Using the paper sheet that I put on the base of the box, I'm gonna put all the excess glitter back in the bottle. To remove the glitter stuck in the hand, I'm gonna use the anti-static cloth. Finally, I unleash the weapon of mass destruction of the glitter. With these little tricks, we reduce the barbaric invasion of glitter through the house and we can enjoy the beautiful effect we have achieved. Continuing with the card, I decided to create a finishing border that will frame the main panel. As a paper, I will use this blue satin mirror card, not included in the kit, but of course the pearlescent blue one from the kit also fits perfectly. Therefore, I'm going to cut out the main panel so that it's slightly smaller than the standard size card. While the blue satin panel measures 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half, it will completely cover up the front of the card base. As a sentiment which will also act as a decoration of my card, I will use the die of the kit. Therefore, first of all, on copper colored satin paper, I die cut the basic shape. Then I'm gonna cut out the sentiment by aligning the die to the basic shape. This die cut can be done in one step, but I thought about it later. Note that the sentiment needs a background that makes it more visible. So I'm going to die cut another base on black cardstock. Then I carefully cover up the entire surface with the strong double-sided tape adhesive. 
I'm also going to eliminate the axis. I don't mind uh, cutting out the wavy corners as the border of this base will be covered uh, by the sentiment frame. Now box and glitter. I'm going to press uh, the glitter well with the paper folder and I'm going to remove all the excesses with a brush. After that, I just have to glue over the sentiment. To have the blue of the borders also in other elements of the card to bring everything together, I'm going to die cut another sentiment base on the blue satin paper. To save paper, I die cut on the panel itself, as the central part will be covered up completely by the base panel. We can glue the blue base slightly offset to one side, but I'd like to make it cover a larger area. So, a little trick, I'm going to cut out the base in half so that it extends horizontally. I'm going to glue everything with some foam pad to give a nice dimension to the card. Then I'm gonna glue the sentiment to the center of the main panel. As well as the main panel on the blue one. Finally, everything on the card base which, as I have already said, it is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half. As final details, I'm going to create a few drops with the copper crystal drop included in the kit. And the card is finished. For the second card, I will create a set of frames with different thicknesses, using, of course, the dice of the kit. The outer frame will be blue, and I got it using three dice, the outer one for the outlines, the one that carves the internal design, and the one that cut out the central part. Having to die cut such an intricate pattern, I will use the C6 precision plate, which having a slightly larger thickness than the classic plate, allows the die cutter to exert more pressure, so that the whole pattern can be covered correctly. After I have removed uh, all the beaten pieces, I'm going to create the base of the blue frame on the rustic uh, dusk mirror card, using the die I used uh, earlier to cut out the frame along the edges. Furthermore, with the matching die, I'm going to cut out the center which I will use to create the second frame. Finally, I'm going to glue the blue frame over the base. Now, on the center obtained from the mirror card, I'm going to die cut the second frame, which will match perfectly with the outermost one. To die cut, I will use the precision plate again to make sure all the small pieces of the intricate design are cut out. 
On blue pearlescent paper, I have cut out the base of the inner frame using the die I used a little while ago to cut out the edges of the frame. As you can see, the first frame is blue on a rustic dusk paper base, while the second has inverted colors, a rustic dusk frame on a blue pearlescent background. So, with some liquid glue, I'm going to stick the frame to its base. Now, let's move on to the sentiment, for which I will use the dyes included in the kit and reverse the two colors again. On uh, blue pearlescent paper, I will use the dye that carves the sentiment, as well as the coordinated dye that cut out the outlines. In this case, I decided to keep uh, the internal cutout of the die cut to use them on a future card and thus implement the paper piecing technique. For convenience, I leave all the small pieces of the paper in the die and I apply double-sided tape on the back so that I can remove them without moving them from their exact position. I'm going to remove the protective film from the double-sided adhesive and I glue the negative part of the die on a piece of copper satin paper included in the kit. Don't mind the fact that it is hexagonal, it is just a leftover. For now, let's put it aside and continue with the card. On the Rustic Dusk mirror card, I die cut the base of the sentiment. After that, I gonna glue the two elements together. The larger rectangle die in the kit is slightly smaller than a 4.25 by 5.5 standard card, so I can create the usual finishing borders. I will use uh, copper satin paper to give uh, to the card a touch of lighter color. In addition to the border, this color can also be glimpsed through the holes that have uh, remained uncovered in the external frame, bringing a touch of copper to the other points of the card. Now I'm ready to glue all the elements together. Each of them will have a different thickness. So for the outer frame I will use a very thin foam tape. For the innermost frame I will use a thicker foam tape, applying a double layer. Also, for the sentiment, I will use a double layer of foam tape. And here you can see the different thicknesses of this card. As a finishing touches, I am going to create uh, here and there a few drops uh, with the Nouveau Crystal Drop of the kit, thus inserting uh, a few more touches of uh, copper that uh, match the edge of the card. I just have to glue everything on my card base and the card is finished. For the card number 3, I'm going for a gatefold card. 
First of all, I'm going to prepare my card base on ivory cardstock. I cut it out into an 8.5 by 5.5 rectangle. Then I'm gonna make two fold lines, one at 2 and 1.8 inches, the other at 6 and 3.8 inches. Or more simply, to make the second line, just rotate the paper and always make a fold line at 2 inches and 1/8. I'm going to reinforce the fold with the paper folder and the base of the gatefold card is ready. Now I'm gonna use the dice of the kit to create an intricate background for the gatefold card flaps. On satin copper paper, therefore, I die cut the two frames of the kit that have the same design and at the same time I cut out the outlines with the two matching dies. Now let's move on to the sentiment and I pick up the negative part of the die cut on blue pearlescent paper which I kept in the previous card. So now I'm going to die cut the positive part of the sentiment on the copper mirror card using both the sentiment die itself and the matching die that cut out it along the edges. I'm going to cut out the excesses of the base following the borders and I'm gonna glue the sentiment on the base, matching it with the negative part of the design. As you can see from what I'd like to achieve, the frames need to be split in half, obviously to allow the opening of the gatefold card. Once divided, I proceed to glue them on the flaps of the card. To decorate the card I'm going to apply the paper piecing technique again, filling with the pieces of blue pearlescent paper the part of the design formed by that sort of horizontal rays in the central part of the frames. So I'm going to decorate only this part twice on pearlescent blue paper. Then I can proceed with the paper piecing. To do it faster, I take advantage of the fact that all the small pieces are still stuck in the die. With a pick tool, I push the various pieces onto the gaps. I'm going to remove the ones I don't need. And I'm going to repeat the same process to all the other portions of the design. Now before gluing the sentiment I'm going to cover the back die cutting the base on satin copper paper. After that I'm going to stick it with some foam pad only on the left flap. I'm going to finish it off by adding uh, drops of blue crystal drop not included in the kit in the corners of the frame and the card is done.
The card number four will be a shaker card. First, I'm gonna make a frame on rustic dusk mirror card using this time the other design included in the set. I also use the two coordinated dies to cut out the frame along the edges. Then, on the blue glitter paper included in the kit, I'm going to cut out the base of the frame, again using the two coordinated dies. So, I'm going to glue the frame of the base using liquid glue. And I'm going to cut out any excess pieces of the blue paper. For the background of the shaker card, I will use the apricot classic card included in the kit. This shaker card will have a double bottom. In fact, instead of gluing the acetate sheet directly on the back of the frame, I put a first layer of foam tape. Then, on top of it, I'm going to stick the piece of acetate. Now I'm going to apply the foam tape layer on the acetate, making sure not to leave any gaps on this area where I will put the element of the shaker card. Element that will be the glitter included in the kit. And this is the second method that I propose to use glitter. To prevent them from getting too attached to the acetate due to the electrostatic force, I'm going to sprinkle the surface with anti-static powder. After that I can fill the area with the glitter. And I'm going to close with the apricot background. Finally, I'm going to cut out any excesses. Then I can pass to the creation of the sentiment, for which I will use one of the dies of the kit and its coordinated die, with which I die cut the base on blue glitter paper. Then I will use it together with the die that carves the sentiment on the rustic dusk mirror card. I'm going to glue the sentiment on top of the blue base, as well as all the sentiment above the acetate in the center of the card. Now let's make the card base. I remind you that the rectangle die included in the kit is slightly smaller than a 4.25 by 5.5 standard card. This time I don't want any border around the frame, so I get the card base by die cutting a standard card with the rectangle die in order to obtain a card of the same size as the frame. To do this, I'm going to place the rectangle die with the top blade above the fold line. After sticked everything on the card base, I'm going to add a few blue drops of crystal drop as a finishing touches, and the super shiny shaker card is finished. For the fifth and the final card in this video, I'll create an Art Deco geometric background using the glitter marker included in the kit. What we need to make this pattern is a circle shape. I will use a die, a pencil and a ruler. I'm going to mark the point of the horizontal and vertical diagonal. Then I'm going to make the background panel from the apricot classic card included in the kit. With a pencil and a ruler, 
I'm going to mark some guidelines creating a grid made up of squares of about 1 inch by 1 inch each. Now, aligning the circle with the guidelines, I start to draw semicircles with the glitter marker. Obviously, you can make your own pattern. After creating uh, the semicircles on each horizontal line, I am going to join the end of each circle with the semicircles below. Now I am going to color the sections that were formed from the intersections of two semicircles. Once the pattern is complete, let's move on to creating uh, other elements to embellish the card. In this case, I will create a frame with uh, the copper pearlescent paper included in the kit, using the two outlying dies from the deco frame set. For the sentiment, I will use the thank you stamp from the kit, stamping it onto the apricot paper with the glitter marker. I'm using a stamping platform because, as you can see, I expected to have to stamp several times to get a nice impression. To decorate the sentiment strip, I'm going to create the top and the bottom edges with uh, pearlescent copper paper. Now I can proceed to glue everything together. For the frame, I'm going to use foam tape, thus creating a window card. If you'd like, you can easily go in for a shaker card. For the sentiment, I'm going to use some liquid glue on the end and foam tape in the middle, so that it is uh, nice and level with the frame. Finally, I'm going to glue everything onto the card base, which I will cut out to make uh, it the same size as the main panel. I'm going to finish the card by applying the glitter accent from the kit in the intersections of the semicircles and in the sentiment strip. The video ends here. Thank you for joining with me today and I give you an appointment at the second part of the video where all the Art Deco cards are waiting for us. See you next time, thank you again and be colorful!